What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new x86 single board computer coming to the market known as the Hackboard 2. Now about two years ago we took a look at the Hackboard on the channel and this was actually planned to come out about a year after the original. But as we know, at that time, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world with manufacturing and, you know, getting your hands on electronics. So this was kind of halted until now. This is available over on their website right now. And I'll leave some links in the description. And they also offered some accessories for the Hackboard too, like this heatsink case. This will keep it protected and nice and cool. And since this board uses an x86 CPU, we've got a lot of different operating system choices. Over on the website, you can actually opt to get Linux pre-installed on the 64 gigabyte SSD, or you can go with Windows 11 Pro. It's up to you. In this video, we're going to be testing out Windows 11 Pro, and I definitely want to check out some 4K video playback, some uh, light gaming and emulation on this board. But if there's interest in seeing Linux running on this, just let me know in the comments below. So inside of the box, it looks like we get a 12 volt, 36 watt power supply. Also have a smaller heat sink here, which will help out with dissipating heat from that CPU, but going with something a bit beefier will help out in the long run. We've also got our regional wall adapters and the Hackboard 2 itself. On paper, looks like a really interesting little board. Uh, we've got a lot of IO here for what we have. Three USB 3.0 ports, USB Type-C, full-size HDMI. We've also got GPIO, and the base model comes with a 64 gigabyte SSD, but it can be upgraded to a four terabyte SSD on this unit. We've got two M.2 slots on this board. Taking a look around the board, and I'm gonna call this the front. We've got three full-size USB 3.0 ports, physical power button over here on this side. Moving around to the back, we've got a full-size HDMI port, our power input, and USB Type-C. Unfortunately, this USB Type-C port cannot be used to power the board, even though this does run on 12 volts over the included power supply. This also includes 40 GPIO pins laid out just like the Raspberry Pi. We've got a fan connector, a battery connector, and a USB 2.0 connector so we can have external USB 2 on this unit. This board can also support a 4G or a 5G cellular module. It is sold separately, but our nano SIM card slot is right here. We've also got an EDP display port. It'll do 2160 by 1440 and our touch interface down here on the bottom. And since I have it here, I figured we'd go ahead and install that Hackboard 2 case. I think it looks really nice. Pulling it out, it's made of full aluminum. It's a two-piece design, so we've got the top plate here, which is going to make contact with the CPU, keeping it nice and cool. And the bottom section does have kind of a little bit of a dish design, so we can add two M.2s to this board with heat sinks pre-installed without any kind of issues. Goes together very easily with just four screws. We have access to all of our external I.O. And this gap here will allow us to connect that EDP touch display. Um, we've got plenty of room in this little case and I think it looks really good. Very minimalistic, but it'll keep this thing protected and cool. And by the way, one thing I should have mentioned is I have installed an RTC battery to keep those BIO settings. And when it comes to the specs for the CPU, we've got the Intel Celeron N4020. This is a dual core x86 CPU with two threads up to 2.8 gigahertz, built-in Intel HD graphics at 600 megahertz. You can pick this up with either four or eight gigabytes of RAM and it utilizes LP DDR4 running at 2400 megahertz. We've got two M.2 SATA ports on this unit, dual band AC Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.1, and this is capable of running Linux or Windows. And if you head over to their website now, you've got the choice of Debian or Windows 11 Pro pre-installed when you pick one of these up. Okay, so like I mentioned, this one came pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro. You can also opt for Linux, you know, straight out of the box, or you can install an operating system that you like. Obviously, we've got an x86 CPU here. Not the most powerful one on the market, given that we only have two cores and two threads, but it does go up to 2.8 gigahertz. So far, not too shabby. I mean, everything loads up really quickly. Just head over to the Hackboard website. As you can see, got some more information about the board itself. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave a link in the description here. But uh, I definitely wanted to test out some 4K video playback, so we're going to head over to YouTube real quick. We'll make sure we're at 4K. This is 4K 60 HDR. And you know, we've tested this chip in the past, even though we've got two cores here, it actually does a great job at 4K video playback. Go right through here. And I was actually expecting to see a few more drop frames, but throughout this whole video, we only had eight at 4K 60. 
So little media device, pretty great. Obviously, since we're running 4K this well, it's going to handle 720 and 1080 without an issue. Not bad for 4K video playback on this little board. And you know, we've seen this chip a lot in lower end laptops, but we're never able to really run it at the higher wattages. Right now, we're at a 15 watt TDP. It's not going to reach 15 watts, but we can max out the GPU and CPU at the same time at 15 watts. It's actually about 13 watts in total. The heatsink case I have installed does dissipate heat very nicely. And you know, if you're maxed out for about 20 minutes, you can hit thermal throttle at 13 watts, even with the case on. But 99% of the time, even while gaming, you're not going to be maxing it out at 13 watts. So you should be good to go with the heatsink case. But the next thing I wanted to take a look at was some light gaming. Obviously, we're not going to be able to play Cyberpunk 2077 on something like this. But some indie games and older stuff may work really well. So let's go ahead and jump into Cuphead. I've set the main resolution of the board to 900p with this game. And uh, we're at 60fps, but as you can see, that N4020 is maxed out here. But we're running this game at 60 FPS. Uh, that UHD 600, about 50% utilization with this, but this is definitely an easier one to run. And so is the next one. We've got Dead Cells. Again, still set at 900p of the base resolution with this board here. 60 FPS, not bad. We can actually go up to around 83 if we turn V-Sync off, but I kind of wanted to keep everything as low as possible here just to see what we could do. And with these indie games, they're running really good. Going back a bit to uh, Bully, this is one I haven't played in a long time, and I'll tell you, the PC version will go up to 1080p. That's what we're at right now. It's locked at 30. I'm not exactly sure if I can go in, you know, to the configuration file and set this to 60 or not, but it originally ran at 30 FPS, and we can run this at full speed. And finally, Half-Life 2, 900p, medium settings, 60 FPS. This will do around 94 if we turn V-Sync off on it, but again, I wanted to keep those temps down. And we only hit a maximum of around 76 degrees Celsius with this heatsink case. Indie games, older PC games will run pretty decently on this. Of course, we do have that CPU maxed out, but the next thing I wanted to test out was some emulation. So we're going to start off here with Dreamcast. I'm using the Redream emulator and we're upscaled to 1280 by 960. I had a good feeling we were going to run this at full speed. And you can see, since we're not running a PC game, our GPU and CPU utilization is way down here because a lot of these emulators only like one core. They only need one core and we can go up to 2.8. With Dreamcast, we should be able to do the whole library here at 1280 by 960. I mean, as long as the game's compatible with the emulator, be it Redream or even Flycast, you're going to be good to go with Dreamcast emulation on the hackboard too. Taking it up a little bit to PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. 2x resolution, Vulcan back in. We've got Ridge Racer here running at full speed. Not a super hard game to run, but I did want to run these 60 FPS games. And of course, when it comes to PSP emulation, there's one we definitely have to get out of the way. And that's God of War Chains of Olympus. Unfortunately, at 2x, we do have some dips into the mid-50s, so I had to take this down to 1x, but we're still using the Vulcan back in. And by the way, I did test out DirectX 11 versus Vulcan. They're right there on par with each other. OpenGL wasn't great, but we've got those other options to run these games pretty well. And the final thing I wanted to test here, at least for this video, was some GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator. We've got Soul Calibur 2 running at 60 FPS, but we are at the GameCube's native resolution. I'm also using the DirectX 11 backend, and it seems to function a lot better on this chip versus Vulkan or, of course, OpenGL. But a lot of these games will run at full speed as long as you're at 1x. The harder to emulate stuff, like F-Zero GX, is kind of out of the question on the harder to emulate tracks. Automotilista was in the lower to mid 50s, even at 1x. So, I mean, there are a lot of games that'll run at full speed, but don't expect to be able to do the full library here, given the CPU we have. So first impressions, it performs way better than I thought it was gonna with that N4020. We've got an older CPU here, two cores, two threads, and it would have been really nice to see a new N6000 series CPU in here just to get a little more performance out of it. And I'll tell you, if you're thinking about getting one of these and you want to run Windows on it, go with the 8 gigabyte model. 4 gigs just isn't going to cut it with Windows 11 anymore. You could always install a cut down version of Windows 11, but uh, having 8 just off the gate is really going to help out. 
After seeing what we've done with Windows here, I definitely want to install Linux on this and get some testing out of the way. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to learn a little more, I'll leave a link in the description to the Hackboard website. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.